Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Dora of Increase or welcome back to the Facebook group if you are watching this in the Facebook group. For those of you who are new, my name is Nate Denise and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today we are back with part 2 of John chapter 3. If you guys don't know, I am currently having issues with my Wi-Fi and it won't be fixed until about September. I'm hoping within the first week of September, but who knows. But having Wi-Fi issues, so I basically have to pre-record videos, edit them, and then go to the library to upload. So you probably will see all of these parts uploaded at the same time. There will be a third part because I'm only going to focus on verses 9 to 21 today. And then tomorrow, I'm going to come back and record the rest which is going to be verses 22 to verse 36. So we basically got through verses 1 through 8 in the first part, and that was about an hour long, um, and it was basically all about Jesus speaking to Nicodemus about how we have to be born again in the Spirit, um, and that is the only way that we can really enter the kingdom of God. So we're going to finish up this portion with the last paragraph and then we're going to dive into kind of like the infamous John 3.16 for God so loved the world and that's what it's entitled. Um, not entitled, that's what it's titled. So um, quickly before I pray, this is the ESV translation for anyone who doesn't know. I use the ESV translation when I am um, doing Bible studies on Facebook or here on YouTube. I personally prefer the New King James translation. I have my post-it, which is my Dollar Tree Cloud post-it, which I did use here to write my definitions down. This is says, never stop looking up. Today, I'm just going to stick with the old-fashioned Crayola Twistables, um, the colored pencils. I'm just going to use these. And then I have my Sharpie pen to write on the post-it. And then my Micron, Pigma Micron 01 archival ink pen. This is in a .25 millimeter. So those are going to be the utensils for tonight. And I'm just going to quickly pray us in. Heavenly Father, I thank you for gathering us here tonight just to study your word, God. As we dive deep into your word, allow the Holy Spirit to just come into this and really convict us if we need conviction. Or just to help us to understand your word even more, Father God. I'm asking that you utilize me to share your word, Father God, so that other women or men, young girls and young boys can learn your word deeply father god i'm asking that we are able to apply what we learn tonight into our personal lives and um continue to just have a better understanding of your word amen so just a quick simple prayer so for those of you who don't know my method um I kind of sort of have like a system, I would say like a five part system to how I study. The first thing I do is I read through. Um, sometimes I'll read a whole section through, sometimes I'll read a paragraph, sometimes I'll read a complete chapter. It really just depends on what I'm reading and um, how much information I can retain so I can write my thoughts. So in this case, I'll be doing just paragraph by paragraph, reading it through, no markings, no nothing. The second time I go through, I will then circle words that I want to define. Um, and these are words that I already know and words that I don't know. Just so that I can define it in its original language. And because this is in the New Testament, the New Testament was written in Greek. So I would look these words up in the English and Greek dictionaries um, to really understand what it means in the context of scripture from back in that time so as not to uh, misconstrue or misunderstand the scripture itself once I do that I read it through again and as I'm reading I then underline or box anything that stands out once I do that I take my notes which you guys see here on the side but I pretty much do that at the same time um, and then the last step is just to add color because color just makes everything much more vibrant and amazing. I do use post-its to write definitions, but I also have two pieces of paper that I glued into my Bible to write on. And these are just papers that I cut out of like journals that I had. So that's pretty much it. Sorry if I'm talking low, but I am going to edit this so that the audio is a little louder simply because um, it's one o'clock in the morning again. As I'm recording 
and um, my son is sleeping and you may hear some noise um, the AC the central air in my house is on but also outside my window I'm guessing is like the main control either for my upstairs landlord or for the basement to this place so you're probably gonna hear that so I apologize ahead of time but let's get through so we're just gonna quickly read through verses 9 through 15 and let me fix the camera just a bit so that I can okay hopefully that works out better let me get this to autofocus one more time I feel like my screen is blurry so I'm going to quickly wipe it off <laughs> Sorry. Okay, whatever. So, just closing my glasses case quickly. Because I got my glasses on. Alright. Starting at verse 9. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. Verse 12, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So I just read through verses 9 through 15. So now I'm going to open up my notes. And I did already upload the printable notes onto um, the Facebook group. I will be adding them probably tonight to the uh, Google Drive. And if you want um, the link to the Google Drive, it's down below. I was going to keep it private for a while and just give it to people who requested. But um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think every video I'm just going to post a link down below where you can find the notes for this Bible study as well as for the two previous ones we did for Ruth and Esther. Um, so if you're interested in any of those printable notes, they will be always down below in the comment section. I mean, in the description box. So let's just go with words that I wanted to define so I think there was only two words that I wanted to define yes and the first word was in verse 13 and that word is ascended so I'm going to circle that and then in verse 15 uh, what was it eternal So those are, the, those are the only two words that I wanted to define. So what I'm going to do is write the definitions on a post-it. So the first word, as I said, is ascended. Did I even write that right? I believe I did. <laughs> ascended. And the Greek word is anabinio. Anabineo, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. So, a Greek word. And I showed you briefly um, in part one how I look up my Greek definitions using both Bible Hub and Blue Letter Bible. There will be an actual full length video um, of me walking you through both sites, but I just showed you briefly on there. Um, I put work. Greek word is A M. Sorry, A N A B A N O with a little accent on it. So the Greek word is ambino, anabino, um, and it means to go up, move to a higher place. And then we have eternal. Um, and 
all I did was find the English definition for that, so it's without end. Never to cease. Uh, without beginning. Because it's eternal, nothing, anything eternal has no end and no beginning. So it's without beginning, always has been, always will be. Always has been. Always will be. So those are the definitions. And then... I need to pick colors, so I'm just going to go in with this lavender for Ascended. Like, I like this lavender, but it doesn't work in my Bible for some reason. Like, it just looks disgusting when I mark in my Bible with it. I don't care for it. Um, and I'll use this yellow for Eternal. So now going for my notes, I have no notes for verse 9 at all, um, but that's just personally like what I got. I didn't really get much from it. Um, it's pretty much Nicodemus just asking how things can be pretty much it. So going into verse 10, I'm going to underline the whole question um, that, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? that whole question and I'm gonna write the note over here basically um, though Nicodemus was a Pharisee I'm sorry guys I'm just quickly reading the notes because sometimes I type the notes up and it doesn't make sense <laughs> but um, what I wrote was though he was a Pharisee Nicodemus for not being aware of the need and the promise of the new birth was Yeah, see, that doesn't make sense. Basically, what I was trying to say was that even though Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and these Pharisees were like supposed to know scripture, they were supposed to know the law, they were supposed to know everything concerning the word, the holy word of God. Um, he wasn't aware of the need and the promise of the new birth that was mentioned in the Old Testament. He knew the passages but didn't understand them, which basically tells me that he was spiritually blind and spiritually ignorant. And it's kind of like a question of, are you spiritually bankrupt? Kind of in a sense. So, um, spiritual, I'm just going to write spiritual blindness. Slash ignorance because that's basically what it was it's like he's calling him like the teacher of Israel so if you're a teacher and you know the word of God why don't you understand what I'm telling you are you spiritually blind are you spiritually ignorant though you supposedly know the scriptures and the word I gotta make sure that I add that and then re-upload it onto Facebook group So then we're moving on to truly, truly. Okay, so we're moving on. It says, truly, truly, I say to you. So it says, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. You do not receive our testimony. So I'm going to underline that separately. So we speak of what we know. Bear witness to what we have seen. You do not receive our testimony. So before I go any further, let me add color. I need color. We all know that I always have that color. Purple.
We speak of what we know. Bear witness to what we have seen. We do not receive our testimony. So I'm going to flip my note page over on the back and write my note. So this is verse 10. Sorry, no, verse 11. So verse 11. So we speak of what we know. Basically, Jesus and his disciples only ever speak truth. And if you really want to just take the disciples out of the equation, Jesus can only speak truth. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the word. He is the word incarnate. He is God in flesh. So everything that comes out of his mouth is truth. If he was to say that this paper was brown, this paper would have to turn brown. If he was to say that this was no longer purple but red, this would have to turn into red. So whatever he utters out of his mouth, whatever he speaks is true. So that's as simple as that. Jesus speaks only truth. I'm going to write verse 11 again. It goes on to say, we bear witness to what we have seen. So basically, many could see the evidence of his work. Um, not only is he like witnessing to the things that he's, that he's seen, but there's evidence in the work that he does. So... Evidence of his work. Can be seen. And then for the last part of verse 11 it says. You do not receive our testimony. So basically Nicodemus and the Pharisees have become so. Basically have become spiritually dull. Even to a nation as a whole. Majority of them are unbelievers. He speaks only truth. There's evidence of the work that can be seen. Yet they still have unbelief in them. They still refuse to acknowledge him. They still refuse to. Um abide and submit to him so either you're spiritually dull or there's something else going on so <laughs> Nicodemus and the Pharisees and I'm saying the Pharisees included because when Nicodemus speaks he says we and it's already been established that Nicodemus is a Pharisee and he's also a part of the Jewish ruling council so He's not just referring to himself, he's talking about himself and the Pharisees and the ruling council as a whole, which then tells us from reading it that they're just all spiritually dull. They choose not to um, fully live out the word as they know they should. So, the Pharisees have become, I wouldn't even say they have become because they've always been spiritually dull. They just didn't realize it until Jesus came and um, basically convicted them. So I have become spiritually dull. Nation as a whole. The nation as a whole, um, and now they're doing firecrackers. Wow. Okay. I apologize right now if you hear those firecrackers outside my window. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going so I hope it doesn't distract you. But um, I'm going to speak a little louder if I can. Nation as a whole, unbelievers are unbelievers. I'm not quite sure why they have firecrackers going at the moment. So I'm just going to add my colors into the corresponding parts that I've marked. That's weird. I don't know why they have firecrackers going on. There's not a holiday. And Labor Day is like still weeks away. So who get I don't even know. Whatever. <laughs> and it is 1.13 a.m. So firecrackers oops at this time should not be the case okay so moving on to verse 12 
and I just caught a major cramp in my foot, but that's alright. Moving to verse 12, um, it says, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So I'm just going to underline that whole verse. And we're going to go with this pink color here. I'm going to write my note over here on the side. Let me just push this up a bit. Okay, so basically... What he's saying is, if you can't grasp the basic things of the earth, how can you truly grasp and understand the things of the spirit? Unbelief is the cause of ignorance and failure to believe. I'm sorry, unbelief is the cause of ignorance and it's failure to believe a witness. So, um... How can I put this? Can't grasp basic things. On earth equals. I didn't mean to put the slash <laughs> through it, but equals. Can't grasp. Spiritual. I'm going to put a period and say unbelief is the cause of unbelief. Unbelief caused by ignorance. That's basically what I'm going to write. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. I'm underlining that whole verse. Going in with this lime green or yellow green, green yellow, however you want to call it. Jesus basically let me, Jesus lets Nicodemus know that only he can speak and do things with authority because he is both fully God and fully man. For us to have power and authority, we need the spirit which is given through Jesus to us. I'm sorry guys, my notes is like, <laughs> so for us to have power and authority, we need the spirit which is given through us being born again by the spirit and then i have a few cross references so let me grab my phone because i'm just going to read them on my phone using the holy bible app but jesus only one who can Do and speak with authority. We need the spirits.
which is given so us being born born again by the spirits and then I have a few cross references so the first one is Proverbs 3 and 4 then we have John 638 uh, and verse 42 we have Acts 2 and 34 and then the last one is going to be Ephesians 4 and 9 so I'm going to take my phone off the charger Hopefully you guys can see this, so I'm just going to my little folder on my home screen. Um, the first one I said it was Proverbs, correct? Proverbs 30 and 4. Right now it's in the King James, so I'm just going to switch it to the ESV since that's what we're using. Um, and 34, it reads, Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has wrapped up... The, gar the waters in garment who has established all the ends of the earth what is his name and what is his son's name surely you know right oh sorry so sorry about that glare hopefully that's better <laughs> okay the next one we have is John 638 so let's just go to John 638 And it says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. I'm going to go to 42, which says, They said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? And how does he... I'm sorry. They said, Is this not Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does... He now say, I have come down from heaven. Then we have Acts 2.34. If I'm a little flustered, it's because I'm tired, but I do want to get these videos done for you guys. Um, because I really, really feel like it's, it's just a lot going on with not being able to do these live sessions. So I'm hoping to start doing live sessions again really soon. But, um, okay. Acts 2.34 reads, For David did not ascend into, he into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to me, said to, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Um, and then the last one is Ephesians 4 and 9. And saying, He ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. So I'm going to say 4, um, verse 9 through 10. So that's with that. Moving on to verse 14. I'm just going to mark it right now. Verse 14. So then it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... So must the sun be lifted up. So, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness is one part. And then, so must the son of man be lifted up will be the second part. And then I'm going to continue into verse 15 with underlining. It says, whoever believes in him may have eternal life. But I'm going to double underline eternal life because I have a separate part for the words eternal life as well. So, color. Because you know we got to add color. Eternal life, second line is going to be that color. Let's get some blue.
starting with this blue for the first part of verse 14. I'm not sure. Did you see that, guys? Yes, you did. Okay. Wasn't quite sure if you saw that. But on um, verse 14, so as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, is what I underlined, right? So I'm going to just quickly go to this cross reference in Numbers. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay. So, this is an Old Testament event that was a foretelling of the work of Jesus. The serpent Moses had was bronze and is a metal associated with judgment in the Bible. Because bronze is with fire, a picture of judgment. It speaks of sin judged, okay? So, this was an event that took place in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. So, I'm going to quickly read that to you guys. So, it says, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Adam and the people became impatient on the way and the people got and the people spoke against God and against Moses why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness where there is no food and no water and we loathe this worthless food then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many of the people of Israel died and the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who was bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Um, this is actually not the one that I wanted, but that's a good one. I need to actually find that scripture I'm looking for. Um, serpent section is the Old Testament. I'm sorry guys, I'm just looking for that. Um, I'm going to actually quickly Google it. Okay, I guess that is the correct scripture. I could have sworn there was another um, scripture for that. But yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So, for verse 14, that first part where it says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Um, OT for Old Testament events. Foretelling the work of Christ. Um, numbers 21, 4 through 9 is the cross reference. So for the second part that says, so, so must the son of man be lifted up. This is basically a prediction of Jesus being lifted on the cross and dying on it so that he could save us. He also ascended into heaven after so this was a twofold statement. Those who look up to Jesus will live spiritually and eternally. So like we just read with um, Numbers 21, 4 through 9, um, God basically had these serpents come bite these people, the people of Israel, his people, and whoever was bitten would, was, were to die, basically. But then he told Moses to create a serpent that was made of bronze and to lift it up. And whoever looked at that bronze serpent that was bitten would actually live so for us Jesus became that sort of serpent that was that bronze serpent that was raised up because if we look at him on the cross we no longer die spiritually and um, we have life eternally so I hope that made sense so um, prediction 
of Christ on the cross. We look up at him on the cross. To live spiritually and eternally. So moving on to verse 15. Back to our mark. My color is down. So verse 15 where it says whoever believes in him may have eternal life this is the verse of 17 references to eternal life in the gospel of john and it's all about having um saving faith so Cross references are John 336, which I'll get to, so I'm not going to read that. And then 1 John 5 12 and verse 20. So, 1 John, sorry you guys. Wrong one. First John five twelve, and it says, "Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life." Going down to verse twenty, it reads, "And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him." who is true and we are in him who is true and his son Jesus Christ he is the true God and eternal life and then the part for eternal life um like I said it's the first of 17 references in the gospel of John and it's the eternal quantity and divine quality of life referencing to heavenly existence and perfect glory and holiness so It is the eternal quantity, which is unlimited, right? And divine quality, of life, referencing to heavenly existence in perfect glory and holiness we have Romans 8 Romans 8, 19 to 23, and Philippians 3, 20 to 21. So I'm going to read those to you. So, Romans 8, 19 to 23. It says, For, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to Futility, not willing, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in him, 
sorry, who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as son, the redemption of our bodies. Then I'm going to read Philippians 3, 20 to 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. So again, this eternal life, it's really talking about an eternal quantity in the divine quality of life, referencing to heavenly existence and perfect glory and holiness. Um, so that's it. So... Moving on to the last paragraph, which is all about For God Loving Us. It's titled For God So Love the World. Um, so I don't know why this looks out of focus. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to read it through. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Verse 19, And this is the judgment, the light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may clearly, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have carried out in God. Okay, so let's get some definitions then. So the first word I have here is condemn, which is in verse 17. So, condemn. Then I have exposed, which is in verse 20. Just two words for this paragraph. Now you might have different words that you wanted to define, but those are like the main two that I really wanted to pinpoint down for myself. So pick in colors, condemn. And exposed. So condemn, um, the Greek word is krino, which is K-R-I-N-O with an accent, and it's to judge, to decide, to pronounce judgment.
Okay. So expose, the Greek word is elegio, elegeco, I don't know how to say that, um, but it basically means to convict, to show to be guilty, or by conviction to bring to light. So that's what exposed means. So now that I'm done with that, I'm actually just going to take this off and just pop it here for now. We're going to now move back to note taking. So, for God so loved the world. And that's pretty much all that I'm going to underline. And then, that's like the first part I'm going to underline, how that should say. So, for God so loved the world. And then, secondly, that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish. Okay, so like I said, I just underlined four parts. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, those are the four parts that I'm going to underline. Now I'm going to go with my colors. Yellow. This maroon kind of color. Magenta, if you will. Lavender. And I did zoom in a bit more. So, verse 16. For God so loved the world. So God did not wait for the world to turn to him before he loved the world. He loved us in our sinfulness. So... references are Romans 5 8 I think Romans 8 32 we have Ephesians 2 4 2nd Thessalonian 2 16 and 1st John Three one as well as first John four nine through ten. So, starting with Romans 5 and 8, it says, But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Going to Romans 8, 32, chapter 8, verse 32, it says, He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things. Moving to Ephesians 2 4. It says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, 2 Thessalonians, move my mic just a bit, 2 and 16 reads, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and give hope through grace. Then 
1 John 3 and 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. And the last one is 1 John chapter 4, verses 9-10. through 10. And that says, in this, in this the love of God has made, was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. So then moving on, it says that he gave his only son. His greatest example, his being God. So God's greatest example of love was sending Jesus to earth to be amongst us. He was betrayed and crucified for our sins through, though he was sinless. This was the expression and gift of his love. This was his gift to us. So, God's greatest example. Of love is sending Jesus. Moving to the next part. That says, whoever believes in him should not perish. This describes the recipients of God's love. God loves the world, but the world does not receive or benefit from that love until it believes in Jesus, That the gift that the Father gave. To believe in Jesus means to trust, rely on, and cling to him. So, Cannot receive the benefit benefits of God's love until believe in Jesus. last part but have eternal life I'm just gonna write C note for verse 15 and what I mean by that is because that last part was just but have eternal life and as I said before it is the eternal quantity and the divine quality of life referencing to heavenly existence and perfect glory and holiness Moving on to verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But in order to, so in order that the world might be saved, and then through him, I'm just going to keep underlining. Okay, so I hope this doesn't bother you guys. Next, it says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. In verse 18, so whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is condemned already. Moving into verse 19. It says, the light has come into the world. People love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light 
that's in verse 20 so everyone who does wicked things hates the light does not come into the light least his works should be exposed is what I'm going to underline and then lastly in verse 21 whoever does what is true comes to the light then I'm going to underline that it may clearly be seen that his works have been carried out in God okay and I did that so that I can get color on the paper because my eyes are like starting to go wonky just a tad bit so yep just messed up slightly I don't have an eraser here so it doesn't matter Sorry about that, I knocked the camera over just a bit. Alright, got my color down. Sorry, you guys. So, we are in verse 17. Okay, verse 17. So, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus was not sent to earth to bring judgment to us. He was sent for another purpose. So that's basically all I wrote was that he was not sent to judge us, and we can see that in Romans 8 and 3. Where it says, For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemned sin 
and the flesh. So it doesn't say that he came to condemn man, but Jesus came to condemn sin. And then 1 John. 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 through 10 as well as 14. So I'm going to read verse 14 because I've already read verse 9 through 9 and 10. But it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So the next part is um, in order that he might be saved, that the world might be saved. Sorry. So in order that the world might be saved. So basically, Jesus revealed the heart of God, the Father, and sending God the Son to bring salvation, which is to rescue, to give us hope, and to heal us. So, Jesus revealed the heart of God. And then through him, which is the part that I underlined here where it says through him, um, at the end of verse 17, basically salvation comes only through him by believing in him being Jesus. So. Cross reference for that is Acts five and thirty one, which I'll quickly read that Acts five thirty one, and that reads God exalted him as his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So continuing on for verse 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned. Oh, you guys can't see that, sorry. Okay, so whoever believes in him is not condemned. Those who believe have everlasting life, that's saving faith, saving faith, sorry. Sorry you can't see this as I'm writing it. I'll show you guys once I'm done. But the cross references I have for that are Mark 16, 16. And that reads, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So... The next part of verse 18 says, whoever does not believe is condemned already. So for that portion where it says whoever does not believe in him is condemned already, inert consequences for any 
who reject, who refuse to believe. Unbelievers' refusal makes their condemnation. Con <laughs> condemnation. <laughs> certain. I am so tired, you guys. So. Inherent consequences. For any who reject, or refuse to believe, condemnation. Lots of cross references, but I'm just going to use First John five and thirteen, and that says, "I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life." Um, I might use another one as well. Let's see. No, I'm just going to use this one. Okay, so moving on to verse 19. It says, the light has come into the world. All right. So Jesus reveals and illuminates the world by living and being the epitome of God on earth. That's what that says to me, at least, when it says the light has come into the world. The next portion which of that says people live I'm sorry, people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Um, people were drawn to darkness meaning they prefer the easy way with all the freedom and I say freedom in quotation marks, which keep them which keeps them from faith and God's rescue, so So people drawn to the easy ways and the freedom in quotation marks, which keeps them from faith and salvation. I have Isaiah 30, 10, Jeremiah 5, 31, and Romans 13, 12. So starting with Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah, what? Serious. Isaiah thirty ten, And it says, Who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us smooth things, prophesy illusions. So basically, people just want to hear what they want to hear and see what they want to see. They want what sounds nice, not what is truth. 
um, Jeremiah 531. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at their direction. My people love to have it so, but what will you do when the end comes? And then lastly is Romans 13, 12. And that says, The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So moving on. To verse 20 I just was trying to see where I wanted to write it at but I'm gonna write my note here so verse 20 it says everyone who does wicked things hates the light so some express their hatred of the truth by actively fighting against it and others express their hatred by ignoring God's truth by saying to Jesus you are not worth my time So some express by actively fighting. Others by blatantly ignoring. And we have Job 24, 13, Romans... 13, 12, which is funny, because <laughs> the last cross-reference was 12. What was this? I'm sorry, the last cross-reference was, cross was the same, and then we have Ephesians. five thirteen. So, again, verse 20, everyone who does wicked things hates the light. So, again, some express their hatred by actively fighting it. Others by blatantly ignoring cross-references are Job 24:13, And that reads, there are those who rebel against the light, who are not acquainted with its ways, and do not stay in its path. Then we have Romans 13, 12 again. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on armor of light. And lastly, Ephesians 5, 13. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. So the last, I mean, the last part of verse 20 says, Does not come into light, lest his works should be exposed. Sinners try to conceal. Their works of darkness. It's impossible to do, and we can see that in Ephesians 5, 11, and 13, and I'll read that. So, it says, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And verse 13 reads again, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. So, Basically, we can't hide the sins that we do. We can't hide the evil that we do. It will come to light sometime, one way or another. And then we have verse 21, which says, Whoever does what is true comes to light.
So basically, be a doer of the word and walk in truth. I have Psalms. 139, 23 to 24, and then 1 John 1, 6. So I'm going to read 1 John 1 and 6 first since I'm already in the New Testament. 1 and 6, and it says, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice truth but if we walk in light as he is in light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from all sin so i'm going to say one through um one chap first john chapter one verses six through seven and then we're going to go to psalms 139 i'm sorry you guys 23 to 24 oops sorry And it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous ways, grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So it's kind of like be a doer, um, apply it, and walk in truth. And then for the last part of verse 21, which I'm going to write my note on the side, um, that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So, be a child of light, do good works. Um, do good works. It shows love of God. Sorry if you guys heard that, my son sneezed. <laughs> He is asleep right now. Alright, so there we go. I'm going to quickly zoom out for you all. Okay. And stick these over here. Let me zoom out just a little bit more, not zoom in, zoom out. And fix this just a tad bit. Okay. But um, that is the second part. Again, we did verses 9 through 21. We just broke this part down. Here are the notes on the side and on the back with this post-it note. And, um, yeah, the next video will be a breakdown of the last portion, which is about John the Baptist's, um, basically his last testimony, which is going to be verses 22 to 36. And for chapter 4, I'm probably going to have to break this up into sections, only because there are 54 verses. Um, same thing with chapter 5 and definitely with 6 because chapter 6 I believe has like 72. Yeah. So like the chapters um, in John are very long. So um, I don't know. Well I'm going to figure out the best way to do this um, because I can do the live videos but it's going to be complicated with the Wi-Fi being down so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep pre-recording videos keeping you guys updated in the group and letting you guys know um, 
how it's going to go because there are 21 chapters and I don't want this to run into 2019 so I do want to finish this before Christmas so um we're going to see how that works out but the next portion will definitely be the last part and yeah so that's it for this evening I am well rather this morning I'm tired it is 2.15 right now I'm going to get my butt in the bed edit in the morning and then record the last part tomorrow and I'm probably going to also record some of chapter 4 just so that I can get us moving so I may record chapter 4 verses 1 through 26 as well we'll see so that is pretty much it for this night this morning i pray that you got something out of this if you have any questions feel free to comment down below send me a facebook message dm me on instagram tweet me if you want to you can email me personally whatever the case may be again i do have the printable notes file where i read my notes from i have that up in the facebook group if you don't have facebook you can just click the link down below to go to the daughter of increase Google Doc and um, I'm sorry not Google Doc the uh, Google Drive to download the files and I'll see you guys in the next video bye